All right. Uh, I apologize if the lighting is a little bit weird. It's a There's kind of a weird weather day out here, and the light is very bright and white. And then I turned on my, my ring light to try and compensate for that. Uh, I'm not sure how that's going to look. I'm not sure how that's going to go. But um, anyway, uh, I, I, I need to follow up yesterday's video uh, about uh, the, the Celon Seek Project <laughs> Uh, issue in Microsoft SQL Server 2017 CU30 because uh, the it turns out that the the documentation in in the in this in the cumulative update shockingly was uh, left left some stuff to be desired left uh, left some crucial elements out now uh, if one were to read this documentation and this is still the documentation as of today I'll even go up here and I'll hit this refresh button uh, and see that uh, as of well uh, let's see it's Saturday morning at around uh, 1150 uh, Eastern time now I know it's hard to believe that I'm this bright and bright-eyed and bushy-tailed at almost noon but you know thanks espresso I should pulled up my log there so you can actually verify that there's something <laughs> <laughs> it's making me function like a human being. But uh, this is still just saying uh, the same thing that it said yesterday. Uh, bu 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 in Microsoft SQL Server 2017, running parameterized query skips the cell on sequence project rule. Therefore, push down does not occur. Uh, if you click on the little link there, nothing happens. It just takes you uh, back to this. To the, this basically takes you to the bookmark of this issue. So that's fun. Uh, and that leaves out... Like I said, a very crucial detail. Now, uh, I'm going to walk back. Screw you, Mac Toolbar. Who, 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 fi who does that? It's Macs are the worst. Don't ever, if anyone uh, ever tries to convince you to switch over to a Mac, uh, f burn them. Burn them like the witch they are, or warlock they are, whatever it is. Or, I don't know. Anyway, uh, yesterday we, had, we, had, we ran through this demo and, uh, where we created an index uh, that very well suits uh, both the query that we're going to run, you know, owner, owner user ID score, right? We got owner user ID and score and the, and the windowing function and creation date and last activity date in the select list. Then later we're going to run some queries that filter on owner user ID with an equality predicate. So this should be a totally seekable thing, right? So yesterday's video I showed you that uh, if we use a literal value <clears throat> and we run... Uh, the, the, we run that query, we get a nice seek, the, the value, the literal value gets pushed down past the sequence project operator, seeks into the index, but when we parameterize the query, uh, that no longer happens, we scan the whole index, create, do the whole dense rank windowing function thing, and then filter out later. All right, so we're going to start here today, <clears throat> and we're going to make sure that we are starting in the right place with none of this stuff going on, right? We want to make sure that none of these things are in effect when we run this. So uh, I'm going to run this query, uh, which is the same query that we ran yesterday, essentially. But uh, the reason I want to run it this way is uh, with that one equals select one is to avoid SQL servers uh, cost based optimizer trying to um, uh, use a trivial plan or uh, use a, a simple parameterization on our query. And when we do that, uh, we get this thing is a literal value, and uh, we can see that uh, you know uh, we have a sequence project, right? This is the this is the seq prj part of that rule that gets skipped and all that. Uh, we got a couple of segments that I don't really care about, but then more importantly, we have the index seek into again our hero chunk. Anyway, uh, let's <clears throat> let's mess with that a little bit. Let's cause a problem here. So yesterday I used a stored procedure to show you that uh, a parameterized query uh, would, would behave differently even with uh, the cumulative update installed, right? So let's let's set parameterization to forced for this database. And remember, under a simple parameterization, you pass in a literal value. It's kind of up to the opt optimizer whether, uh, you know, the trivial plan uh, simple parameterization kicks in and you actually get a simple parameterized query. Under forced parameterization, under most circumstances, SQL Server will be like, oh, well, cool, we can just throw this right at you, right? Hit, 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 turn that into a parameter magically for you. All right, so now with parameterization force turned on, let's run this thing. And this is where things uh, sort of start to fall over, right? Because with force parameterization turned on, uh, we now have a query, the query plan that looks like this. 
No, I didn't mean to. Didn't mean to have that tooltip pop up. Apologize there, but uh, you'll notice that this looks kind of funny, right? Everything has these little spaces and stuff between, it, and everything's lowercase as as God intended. So, uh, if anyone out there is watching and perhaps uses uh, uh, capitalized table aliases, uh, perhaps this is you know a pretty good sign that uh, that's the wrong way to do things. Just saying. But uh, anyway. We have uh, owner user ID equals at zero, and uh, we have, and I, I, this is one of my favorite parts of simple parameterization, is, uh, and at one equals select one. So, um, not really sure where they came up with that. It, that's just, it's just kind of cute for me. But anyway, uh, the query plan looks a little bit different uh, because we got this stuff up here to deal with that. Uh, we actually have a startup expression predicate on the literal value one equaling the at one parameter, but you know that's neither here nor there. Uh, the important part is down here where uh, we now have that index scan that we saw yesterday, right? And that takes a couple seconds. And uh, over here we have a filter operator, right? And that filter operator is where we figure out uh, if was where, where that parameter value that we passed in gets applied now. Yesterday, we had the sort procedure where it was called at user ID. Uh, today, the predicate is just going to be uh, that at zero that we saw uh, in the query text up here, right? That at zero, right? Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> you know, when I was looking into it yesterday after I recorded the original video, uh, something that threw me off and I thought was pretty funny was that, uh, you know, a lot of these, a lot of these things are, um, are hidden behind uh, trace flags. And now a very common one uh, that a lot of these fixes get hidden behind is trace flag 4199. 4199 has been around, I don't know, since like SQL Server, I think, I want to say 2008, but it might even be 2005. I, I refuse to try to find that literature at this, at this point. But um, uh, 4199 hides a lot of the optimizer hot fixes that end up in... Uh, in SQL Server. So this was like the first thing, that, like after I recorded yesterday's video, I was like, okay, calm down, center yourself, Eric Darling, stop drinking. Uh, well, that didn't happen. But uh, so if you turn on this trace flag, something kind of funny happens at first uh, in that uh, you turn on trace flag 4199 and, and you run the query again and uh, you get the same query plan, right? And this might throw you off. Right, and why might this throw you off? Good question. I was just about to ask that. That's a great question. Is the next one that you answer in the video? Uh, so the reason why you get the same query plan, this whole thing, is that um, trace flag for, turning on trace flag forty one ninety nine, which enables optimizer hot fixes, doesn't actually clear out the plan cache. No, it does not. So some a trace flag that directly affects optimizer behavior does not clear out the plan cache. Why? I don't know. I'm going to pause for a moment. Hope I don't make any mouth sounds with that. Do hate a, do hate a mouth sound. But uh, let's clear out the plan cache then. <coughs> Need a little pick me up there. Uh, let's clear out the plan cache and rerun this. Right? My favorite characters ever is a rerun. But now with trace flag 4199 enabled and uh, the, the a fresh plan generated for this query, we get the behavior that we would expect to see based on the documentation, which does not mention trace flag 4199, uh, out, of, out, of, out of the box with a little, little, little uh, modification to the box there. Tiny little difference. So good, right? Sort of, I guess. Um, no, no one, no one told you that, uh, and that's kind of, kind of depressing. But uh, let's let's turn off trace flag forty one ninety nine just just to prove to you that you know that is the case that uh, forty one ninety nine does not do anything to the plan cache. We turn that off. We're actually still going to get the same query plan as last time, right? We get the the seek plan again. So that's kind of annoying. Uh, one thing that is different, and one thing that does clear out the plan cache and allow you um, allow you to uh, get. The, the plan is to uh, use the altered database scope configuration method of turning on optimizer hotfixes, which is probably the preferred method, to be honest, just because, you know, turning trace flags on and off is a little tricky. Uh, you know, they don't, they don't persevere restarts unless you, um, you know, uh, set them at, at SQL Server startup. 
uh, or you you have a startup store procedure run to flick those switches on. But um, even with like stuff like Trace Flag eight hundred four eight, you know uh, the, the startup. Uh, the start the startup procedure option isn't quite as good because a bunch of other stuff gets initialized first. So anyway, <laughs> story for a different day. Uh, but anyway, so we turn on optimizer hot fixes and all of it, and you know you will get the fresh plan, the plan cache, and clear it out, and you get the seek plan and all that stuff. Uh, so that's that's sort of that's sort of it for this one. Um, if you want to see uh, your parameters get pushed past the sequence project operator, you are going to need to. Um, uh, enable trace flag 4199 and clear out the plan cache or uh, use the data, database scope configuration to set hot fixes on. So <clears throat> moral of the story here. Well, I guess there's, there's maybe uh, two or three of them. We'll see. We'll see how many I think of as I start talking. Uh, one, uh, Microsoft C CU documentation is crap. Uh, Real bad. Uh, two, uh, trace flag 4199 does not clear up the plan cache, despite the fact that it uh, directly affects the way the optimizer uh, handles queries. Uh, three, the database scope configuration for query optimizer hotfixes does clear up the plan cache. And uh, I guess four, why the hell wouldn't you make both of those things behave the same way? Why wouldn't uh, why wouldn't a, a trace flag that changes optimizer behavior clear out the plan cache so that you can immediately see that optimizer behavior? That's a, that's a little bit weird for me. I mean, I know like the database scope configuration thing uh, that cropped up around SQL Server 2016, I think. So we had let's see, like uh, probably uh, three, four versions, major versions of SQL Server between of, of trace flag 4199 not clearing out the plan cache. That's Ain't that cute as boot. Anyway, uh, I'm going to go uh, finish this uh, espresso, we'll call it. And uh, <clears throat> I don't know. I'm going to wait five years for this video to render on my piece of crap Macintosh computer. And uh, that'll, be, that'll be my day. Just spend the day tending to the fire that, that occurs when, when I render a video. So uh, anyway, you all have a wonderful Saturday or whatever day you end up watching this on. I hope that, hope that, you, hope that you are living your best lives. Thanks for watching.